Great. Okay. So a couple things I did is I actually dumped my WordPad. And I took everything inside of that and I dropped it into uh, Xcode. Xcode is a little bit more friendly to HTML and I just made a, an empty file and I entitled it demo1remade.html um, just in case. Now you don't have to have Xcode for this class but I just called it uh, something like this and I just dropped in HTML right there. And because Xcode is a little bit more built for code, I went ahead with that. Of course I called my one demo one remade and then I dropped the code in here. And so here's the uh, result is it says please input a number between one and ten. Now the input is of type number so I can run that up and let's enlarge that. And I say submit. Oh, okay. Input is good to go. What if I went, oh, no, no, I want something much bigger. Nope. Too big. Obviously, because it needs to be between 1 and 10. So let's, let's go like this. Now, this is an important skill where you go inspect element. And usually that's because my, develop, my developer version of my web browser is active. Now, I know for certain that Safari, Chrome, Firefox all have developer versions, which you may need to turn on in different ways. But the developer sees the web page a little differently than the regular user, in that they actually want to do this. They want to inspect each part of the page. And so it in the it it, it reveals in the inspect element, it reveals uh, the uh, underlying HTML within the page. And so what's cool about that as a web web developer and certainly as a web development student is you can investigate any given part of the page and it will highlight the code associated with that with that element. Now some important things to take stock of here is the ID of these different HTML elements. Whenever an HTML element, you know, naturally input is going to show this box and the button is going to be the button, and the paragraph is going to be that. You guys see that that creates different elements. But what's cool in demands explanation is the ID associated with these elements. Now, the reason why you have an ID there is because JavaScript is able to see things by their identifier or their ID. So when we say get element by ID, that's one of the most important parts of JavaScript. And so because you guys are running code behind the scenes, that is thinking about considering and evaluating the values that people are putting in there, you then can change what the user sees. So there's interactivity behind your web development. So the IDs are very good. So we have an ID here of num, and that's where we're going to get you know, the originating value. And then we have an ID here of demo, where we're going to talk to the user and give them some feedback. So that's, that's the two elements that we're considering within this uh, uh, if-then. Does that sound OK? Now, who is OK with the if-else? Who sees if-else and are just, you're just OK with that? Anybody see the if-else and are kind of like, uh, yeah, I remember that from programming, but I hated it? Anybody feeling like that? I want to know. It's much more, it's much more um, helpful to your co to your classmates when you admit that something is not going so good. Does that make sense? I had a good buddy at college, and he went to Harvard. He was one of those kids who got into Harvard. Like a million, you know, ten million kids are applying to school. A thousand of them get into Harvard. He was one of them, and he said that um, he actually asked a question in one of his classes, and everybody looked at him, and he had worked on the question for like three days, and he. And he raised his hand, and he, and he repeated the question that he and and everybody was like, huh, you know. And the teacher answered the question, and then each of the students studied my buddy's question for the final. They thought, okay, that we're going to actually review the question that the student asked. And so I thought, well, probably more students should, at Harvard should feel enfranchised to ask a question. A B, probably, um, probably students, um, you know, they should probably ask big questions. Does that make sense? 
But also, when a student asks a question, everybody remembers you know, that that student had the courage to just say something. Does that make sense? So when we say, how did that, how did the if else work? If you're actually not feeling very good about it, you're actually serving humanity. And now that it's on YouTube, you're serving a billion people by asking a question. Okay, so if it, something isn't going right, try to, try to say something about it. So anyhow, that's, that's that.